Hey everyone, so in this video, it's a follow-up to the previous food prep video, and in this one, we're gonna have multiple plates, multiple orders, an independent timer for each order, because usually there's a time management element that if you don't complete an order in a certain amount of time, the customer leaves. We're not actually gonna have the customer on the screen yet. That's really a separate video. And then I've added an indicator on the screen so that you know which plate you're working on and you're gonna move that using the tab key. So the first thing I did is I shrunk the plate because it was simply too big. You didn't need to see me do that. You can see that it's now 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.7. Whatever object you're using, shrink it down to whatever size is necessary. That's not one of the takeaways from this tutorial. Uh, the actual position is dependent on what you're doing. However, the relative position is important. What I did is each plate is the exact same distance away on the X axis. Zero to two is two and two to four is two. That makes positioning the object on the plate much easier because it's an easy calculation. If you're on the first plate, it's zero. If you're on the second plate, uh, if, yeah, second plate, it's two. Third plate, it's four. So it makes it very easy to track where you're moving the ingredient to. Okay, so let's take a look at to see how we are going to do that. So first, as you can see, we're using the same variables, but we've turned them into arrays. So order value rather than just having one value now has to have multiple values because there's multiple orders. So you just put the square brackets in front of it. That turns it into an array. You have to have the squiggly brackets for the values, and then you have a comma separating the values. So this is going to be associated with the first plate, second plate, and third plate. The actual numbers don't matter. I am just putting placeholder numbers in for the purposes of testing. But as a quick reminder, each position represents a different ingredient. So the ones place is the top of the bun, the tens place is the cheese, hundreds place is bacon, thousands place is the burger, and the ten thousands place is the bottom of the bun. And so a zero means you don't have it, a one means you have one of it, and anything greater than one means you have multiple of that. So in this case, it'd be two patties because it's a two in the thousands place. So just as we turn the order that is being requested into a, an array, we have to turn the plate, three plates, also into an array because each one is meant to correspond to the other. So this number ideally will be set equal to that. Right now, if you don't have it set, nothing happens. If you have it set correctly and it matches, it says correct. In your game, what you'd probably do is even if you give them the wrong order, they'll still pay for it, but maybe there won't be a tip. And then if you're doing really detailed management, maybe the client doesn't come back and you have decreased clients. So it depends on you know, the level of complexity that you're trying to do for your game. So each value here is the plate that you're making to try to fulfill the corresponding number up here and ultimately they should match if you've made the plate correctly, if you've put the right ingredients on it. Now, the new concept that we're really adding is we have a third variable to manage all this, and this is the timer. So each order is going to come in at a different time. At this moment, I have it set all to 60 for simplicity's sake, but each order is going to come in at a different time, and when it does, you start the timer for that object. I just have them all coming in at the same time at the moment. Again, this is iterative. You have to start somewhere and then you make it more complex. So just adding a timer for each order is huge improvement because that will let you um, do the QA as far as if, it's, if it gets to zero, does the customer walk away, that kind of thing. And then you have to throw away the food, okay? So that's the new major variable that we're adding to track the orders. Now, as far as being able to move from one position to another, as far as in the index, this is position zero, this is position one, this is position two. You need a variable, an integer, to say which one you're looking at. Are you, are you trying to fulfill order one, two, or three? And if you do, then that means you're building on plate one, two, or three. Well, I, sorry, I'm saying one. It's actually the zero position. So got to be careful if as far as the array that is actually the zero position but it's the first plate on the screen so the array says zero but it's this plate so i'll try to keep that straight 
So anyways, this is going to indicate which one you're working on. So is it order zero, order one, order two? Is it plate zero, one or two? Is it the corresponding time for order zero, one or two? So that's what plate number is going to be used for. It's going to be used to determine which position we're going to be modifying. And then plate X, X position, X POS. So this is going to move in tandem with this. When this gets increased because you're moving to another plate, this will also be increased so you know where, well, not you personally, but so as that Unity will know where to position the object. Because before, there was one, there was one plate. There was just this. So the X position was always zero. So we didn't need a variable. Now that there's three plates, we need the variable. And I already discussed that I uh, separated them by an even two. That way, this can be evenly um, incremented without any kind of complex calculation. OK, so hopefully I didn't make a hash of that part. That is the new core functionality. Now it's just taking that and cascading it out because everywhere that you saw this variable, we need to now adjust it for the plate number. Everywhere that you saw this value, we need to adjust it for the plate number. So you're going to see that that that's the main thing that you're going to see change for the rest of this video. OK, so public static int, public static float. And the reason why this is float is because this is, again, the X position, which is a float, not an int. And this one is a float because, again, that's going to be used to represent time measured in seconds. Now this public transform plate selector. Let's save that. What that does is that will create a new variable in the inspector where we can drag and drop our plate selector. So let's go ahead and do that now. We'll click on GM because remember, game flow is attached to GM. There it is, plate selector. We already have it under plate zero. So we'll just drag and drop that there. OK, the update section. Previously, there was absolutely nothing here because all this script did was hold a few variables. And now we're actually going to be using this to manage the game flow, as the name would suggest. So the update section is executed once per frame. If input.getKeyDown is tab, so you press the tab key, then that plate number, so which plate are we looking at, it's going to be increased by 1. And the plate position is going to be increased by 2 because, again, x position is 0, 2, and 4. So by doing that, we can just add 2, add 2, add 2 until you get to the end. And then you have to wrap around to the first position. Speaking of which, if plate number is greater than 2, then plate number gets set back to 0 and x position gets set back to 0. So you go back to the 0 position within the... Um, array as well as the X position that you're going to be building on. Okay, so again, this is just tracking if tab is being placed, changing the position in the array, changing what position of the uh, which plate we're going to be placing it on based on the X position, and then if you exceed two, this gets reset back to zero. And we now have to have a timer for each of the values. You could technically do a for loop, but since there's only three, I just wrote it out three times. So order time zero minus equals time dot delta time. If your math classes have been quite some time ago, you might not remember. So delta usually refers to change, the change in something. So again, this happens once every frame. And since different computers runs at different speeds, you want to have a consistent amount of time separated. So time dot delta time is saying take the value that is here in this position in the array, take that value and reduce it by however much time has passed. So if it's a, a slower computer and more time has passed, a bigger number will be subtracted. If it's a faster computer and less time has passed, then a smaller number will be reduced. That way it will be independent of frame rate. This should still keep exact time or close enough for these purposes. And then plate selector. So as you saw, we created a variable for the plate selector. Now we're saying take that plate selector and move it. So plate selector dot transform dot position equals new vector three. And here we see that plate XPS show up for the first time. So this is saying move the X position 
to the plate exposition, which again starts at zero, can go to two, can go to four, and then if we hit tab again, it'll go back to zero. So if you want, let's let's just show you that functionality if I didn't mess anything else up. So if I hit tab, see? So you can see that you're cycling through. Okay. So that was the game flow script. And now, like I said, it's just a matter of taking these changes and cascading it to wherever these variables were before that we now have to declare the position in the array. So we go to click place. This is used when you're clicking on the food and we've taken, you've gotten rid of the zero, which was a constant and replaced it with X position because again, you're not putting it on the same plate, you're putting it on whichever plate you have selected. And so as plate exp uh, exp exposition cycles from zero, two, and four, therefore when you click on the bun bottom, it'll go to zero, two, or four. You click on the bun top, it'll go to zero, two, or four, so on and so forth. So that's the only change that has been made here is replacing zero with, with, with gameflow.exposition. Now here, as I said, we have to indicate which position in the array is going to be modified. It wasn't an array before, so it was just gameflow.platevalue plus equals food. But now you have multiple values and you have to determine which one. So again, we're using that plate number. So just as the plate that is being moved to is changing the representative variable that's tracking that order is also changing. Don't worry too much about this. This is just debug. You technically don't have to do this. This is just displaying several values so I can see if it's working. And I'm just going through all the scripts since there's only five. Meet con, I believe, has not changed at all because there's still only one pan. So since there's only one pan, movement to the pan hasn't changed. But if we make a version where you have multiple pans, like you have a stove top, then you would have to do the same type of thing. You'd have to create an array to determine which pan is selected. Cook move. So this is also for the meat. And this is once you can click on the meat as soon as it's been put in the pan, but it won't be cooked. We already covered that. You have to wait for it to turn brown and then you should move it. So the only thing that's really changed nothing at the top has changed we on mouse down what we're doing is again you don't want to move it just to zero you want to move it to zero two or four depending on which plate has been selected so this is how you change the meat from going to just zero to zero two or four so as you can see it's actually pretty easy it's just replacing that constant with the variable and you just have to have a tight control over what that variable can become and in this case it's three values Gameflow.platevalue, again, since we now have an array, we have to say which value in that array is being changed, and it's the plate number position. So plate value, plate number, plus equals food. So the only thing that's really changed is this, because in your script, it probably should say gameflow, plate value, plus equals. You, again, you're just modifying for the fact that it's now an array. And nothing in the cook, cook timer has changed because that is independent of the plate. So it's really just that and that that is changed for cook move. And then serve plate. So this is actually pretty concise because before we said is the order value of is the value in the order value variable equal to the value in the plate value variable. Once again, we now have to have because it's an array, we have to compare here like positions. So how do we do like positions? We use the same value. We use plate num. So if the selected plate, so gameflow.platenum is equal to gameflow.plate value, and both are, are it's all it's both use the plate num position. So order value and plate value. Order value, plate value. If plate num is zero, it's comparing this to this. If plate number is one, it's comparing this to this. If plate number is two, it's comparing this to this. So that's all you're doing. You're just saying if the corresponding plate value matches the order value, then 
display that's correct. Just, and I also put in the order timer. So I want to see how much time has passed because I want to demonstrate to you that's working. Because again, a lot of this isn't on the screen yet. The only reason why we know what is wanted is because we're looking at the script. Okay, so I think we can do one final run of this. Again, I typically try to run this partway through, but it's really hard when you make this many changes. So we already know that the timer is working because we saw that it said like 50 some odd seconds at the bottom. And now we just have to make sure that we can navigate successfully. So this one is all ones, this one is one and one. Uh, let's do those to begin with. We can just run this a couple times. So just to prove that we really are navigating. So the indicator is there. I click on the bun, hit tab. You can see the indicator is there. Click on the bun, hit tab. There you go. So you know that it's working. Now we're going to tab twice. And this one only wants the top bun. And now if I click on this, there you go. Correct. And there was 42 point some odd seconds left. All right. So let's go ahead and kick, uh, click on the meat to cook that. We will move over here. And since order doesn't matter, I believe this one was, yes, yeah, it shows at the bottom here. So this is in everything. We'll click on it. And there you go. You can see there's only 15 seconds left, which means this one would be late. And this one, I believe, was two patties. Technically, you shouldn't have them cook at the same time like that. I just haven't created the array over there yet where you'd have a stove top. So you could put in a prohibition where you can only cook one at a See, I messed up. I did not move that. So that's good that it messed up because you're not holding the person's hand that the player can make a mistake. And that's the whole point. So we'll cook another patty. So this really should should be deleted. This shouldn't be here anymore. Once you click on the plate, but that I think it will be for another tutorial. And I think we said that this one is just, yep, that should do it. And you can see negative 40 seconds. Okay, so I think that's about it for this tutorial. So that demonstrated everything I wanted to demonstrate. You now have an indicator. You now have multiple plates. Yes, you can make mistakes and put things in the wrong place, which is good because if you couldn't make mistakes, then there's no challenge to the game. So I think that's about it. If you guys want to see more tutorials, just let me know in the comments. Do a like and let me know specifically you want to see. Uh, I would say the next thing is probably to have multiple pans over here cooking. And then at that point, it's really just creating the UI as far as showing a timer and showing the order that the that the um, person is asking for. I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to do that. I'm not sure how we can make it so is that it's evident what toppings are on it. Um, and then taking that uh, value from the order value array and having that translate into a picture. That would probably just be a bunch of select statements that if the value is such and such, then display such and such image. But I'll put some thought into that. But that, that's probably be the final thing because, again, you can't do the UI until you have the functionality in place. Once we have the functionality in place, then that's really the last thing that you do is add those visual representations. And that's if you guys are interested in seeing more. But yeah, the next thing will probably be to have multiple plates. That way you have to cook different types of food at once and that you have to queue up and make a decision as to what you want to cook first. And then we will put the visual representation on the screen. Okay, so I hope you found this useful and please do enjoy the rest of your day.